whenever you're ready. Hello all, we're gonna talk about the Read and Write Literacy software, which is available to all faculty and staff and students at NCC. And while technology really has increased with the built-in accessibility tools, such as Windows Narrator, Mac has VoiceOver, um, Word has its own accessibility view with the immersive reader, uh, free programs such as Natural Reader and NVDA. This is just another tool in that arsenal, but it's more of a literacy software. That being said, we have been using it at NCC for several years now. And the reason we switched was, again, a few years ago, those in the box screen readers were not as robust and user-friendly as they are really becoming. We were using the Kurzweil system, which was really the top of the line system, and they had a significant price increase, significant that it would be over $40,000 a year for NCC. So read and write was really kind of coming in to fill that void, especially at community colleges. And we were able to work with them to get a full enterprise system, which means any faculty, staff and students can use it. Um, the nice thing about it is that it works on multiple devices and some of the mobile devices, there may not be all the features or might not be at ro as robust, but I think really working at the community college, many of our students perhaps do not have that much access to technology. And if they have a Northampton email address, uh, as long as that is active, this may be used for some of their children if they find this need when they're doing their own schoolwork. Or read and write is used heavily also in the K-12 system. So I have it on my Padlet here. It's available to all of us. Um, nice Way also has some quick tools that you also can check for course accessibility in your course materials or when you are looking to purchase new course materials. The download is directly on my NCC, which eventually will be SharePoint, and also in Blackboard under information for instructors under the faculty resources for, for students folder. The download is also available at text help. So here is basically the example of the Blackboard page. Where it is it? And it has all the directions. And it's under our disability services faculty handbook. The students have also availability. Their download link is under the student information tab in the Blackboard technology and help folder. Same login as faculty and staff. I do wanna point out that the dictionary features, both of them have are disabled to avoid any work around um, the remote captioning software and like respond to lockdown browsers. So you log in with multiple devices and it's your NCC email and password. And that's it. Um, I'm gonna show you the dashboard. The description of features can also be found on the Disability Services page of my NCC and under the same Blackboard tab. So for this purpose, I have customized my dashboard to have super large icons. One of the things that they have is you can do highlights. So if a student is reading something in read and write, you can highlight it, different colors, vocabulary may be blue, main idea is pink and so forth, and you can collect the highlights. Um, there's also some like a research folder. If you're working on a research project, you can organize it in that folder. Audio maker, if a student is reading something on the web, even a Word document or a PDF, they can highlight it, copy and paste it into the audio maker and it will make an, an audio file. Um, there is the PDF reader, which Chris is gonna talk about it. And as you know here, you'll see the dictionaries are disabled. There's also video tutorials for each feature. It's on the text help main page. 
Text Helps YouTube channel, or the I icon on the dashboard in Windows, or under the Help tab in Macs. And I'm going to show you some of the fan faves that most of the students use. For, and it may, again, students may use their own built-in screen readers, but they really start using this when uh, the screenshot feature when they have a static test in Blackboard. But before I do that, NCC has the premium license. So if you look at this, this is what we have from Windows, Mac, Google Chrome, Edge, iPad, and Android. And which of the features are there. But the fan phase, I'm going to do screenshot readers. So I'm going to go into my test. And a screenshot, really, you could do it two ways. A screenshot, you can hover and read the whole screen, or you could draw a box around the passage you want them to read. And so this is the test. And it's coming. Question one, what is the name of NCC's mascot? O Tommy Trojan, O Sam Spartan, O P Panther, O Bread Greyhound. You can read it again. You can change the reading speed. And if you think, okay, I have it, press the answer and go. But you see, while I had this as a multiple choice, click on it, it read it as an O. Um, and most students don't have any issues with that. They um, understand that that is the answer key. And then it just goes on. So let me go back to here. And that's about it. Now I'm going to flip to Krista, who is going to talk about the PDF reader and why it can be PDF readers can be confusing and why that you sometimes will need to have an alternate version such as in Word. So take it away, Krista. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Oh, I guess. Um, yeah, thank you. Okay. So I'm going to pull up my, as you can see, my read and write toolbar is already up at the top. And I'm going to show you how to use the PDF reader. So when you click on PDF reader, um, it's going to ask you what you want to open. So I'm going to navigate to a PDF document called Important Dates that has a has our fall semester um, start dates for each uh, session on here. And I just wanted to show you guys how it will read in this PDF. Um, now, looking at this PDF, you can see how it's how it's set up, how it's um, not so much the tables, but you can see how the reading order could be a little um, difficult for the program. Now, if it's just a regular PDF document with text on it, it, it doesn't have a problem. But um, in this case, it does, and I'll show you. So when you have the document up, all you need to do is click where you want to begin reading. So I'm going to click right here. Academic periods with dates and new course section designations. Fall semester 14 weeks plus final exams, 83012, ATVNGL 101-01. Mid-fall 10 weeks plus final exams, 10 4, 12, 8. So you can see how it skipped from the fall semester down to the mid fall where we would read, you know, accelerated fall one and go this way and then go down. So when creating PDF documents, um, and I'm sure this came from a Word document, it's important to make sure that the reading order is in the way that you want it to be read. There's a way to go in in a PDF document to re reorder the reading number um, through the accessibility feature. I don't know if 
You guys are familiar with that within Adobe. I don't know either if it's just an Adobe Acrobat um, tool, but there is a way to go in there and reorder. But <clears throat> again, for a student that's using Read and Write, chances are they are um, not visually impaired. Um, if students that are visually impaired are, are more likely to use a program called JAWS. And with that, is the screen reading program. But this, this, this same thing would happen in JAWS. The reading order would still be still be a little off. So it can be confusing. So you do always want to make that the re make sure that the reading order makes sense. Um, and again, that can be done in Word before you convert into a PDF document. Um, I know that we wanted to go over how you can just see how the document can be can go from a PDF to a Word document. And I will show you that. Let me get out of here. And when we were doing it with this program, the screenshot reader could read each one of the passages. And again, this is also going to, like this document is full college wide and it was to be aesthetically pre pleasing. So we also recommended that having the Word document accessible at the same time would still allow both methods of getting the information. Correct, correct. So when I have the PDF document, for you to take it to a Word document, you just go into File um, and save as, was it, save as, oh, I'm sorry, Export to Microsoft Word and then Word document. And it's going to ask you to save it as a how you want to save it, what you want to name it as. I'm just going to save it as it is. And what that will do, it'll take what we had in the PDF and turn it over into, put it into a Word document. Now, as you can see, because of all the different um, fonts and um, boxes, sometimes there is a little bit of edit editing that you might need to do, but it does take you all it takes it all over there and, and through that. So, um, like I said, there might need to be some manipulation, um, but that's how you're able to do that. And again, a lot of times what it is, is I think you, you're starting with the Word document and then going to the PDF. But again, you just always wanna make sure that that reading order is clear and in order of how you want the document to be used. Now, for our students, that come and want to learn the program through us, it's because they get the accommodation of alternate text. And the process of that is um, fairly easy. So they would come to us and say, you know, um, I'd like to have my biology book in alternate text. So we have the student download the read and write program, show them how to use it, we're able to you know, Zoom with them. However they feel comfortable learning the program, you know, we can Zoom with them, we can talk to them on the phone. Um, but then they have to show us proof of purchase of their textbook. So if it's a receipt, they can show us that. If they wanna take a picture of the book and send us that, that's fine too. Once we receive that and know that the student has purchased the copy, we are able to provide them with the PDF format of the textbook. Um, I get the text usually through uh, Access Text Network, which is a grouping of a lot of the main publishers like McGraw-Hill, Pearson, Norton, and it's, it's kind of like a one-stop shop where I can go in, search for the ISBN number, find the PDF file, and then download it, and then I share that to the student. Most of the times I upload it to Dropbox and share it with the student and then they can go in, download it and then use it. So just to show you what that looks like, um, the student again would have the read and write toolbar up, click on PDF because we're gonna be opening up a PDF file. I'm gonna go into my books and look for a biology book, so. Biology of the Core. Now in this case, not all, but in this case, the textbook is broken down by chapters. So you can see chapter one, chapter two, and so forth. Um, other times, I know that Norton isn't always broken down by chapter, but it's one big 
PDF file. So sometimes students will say, hey, can you break it down for me by chapter? And if I'm able to do it, I can do it relatively easy with Adobe Acrobat by extracting pages. So let's just open up a chapter. And again, it'll look just like your textbook. So it'll have all the pictures. It'll have everything in here. So um, what's great about this for students is that they can, you know, have their book in front of them and they could, or they could follow on the screen, they could listen to it, whatever works well for them. They might be getting, um, you know, their eyes might be a little strained from reading in the, in the book itself. So they might just sit back and, and listen to it. But again, you can use the screenshot feature in here, or again, you can just click where you want to begin Artificial reading. Artificial selection in the origin of species. Darwin noted that for millennia, humans have been substituting our desires for the effects of the natural environment thereby enforcing us. I always tell students that it's, um, you know, they might be able to listen to more of like a, a novel in a quicker speed than they would in a biology or, te or chemistry textbook. They might have to slow the speed down just so that they can comprehend and really get what um, it is that they're reading. But this is, um, this is this is what it looks like. It's it's great uh, in terms of the formatting. You know, it, it's not all over the place. Um, it it's it's what they see and they can follow along really well in it. Um, so that's that in terms of the of the textbooks. Um, I see a lot of students are are requesting textbooks in alternate format. But what's great now too is with the publishers being that so many books are available in such a wide variety of formats, um, some of the publishers have their eBooks already set up with readers available through their site. So I think Norton was one of them. You know, they have that little ear icon that they can click on and they can read their, have their book read to them out loud. So um, in some cases where that's offered, they don't even need to come to me for the PDF. Sometimes they'd rather it. They're used to read and write and they wanna use it this way and we provide them with the PDF. But um, I think with universal design and it's just, it's more out there now and um, the books are accessible for our students. Any questions on that? I just had a comment I wanted to add for the sake of the recording. Um, you were talking about sure. um, reading order in PDFs and in Word. And uh, for anyone who's watching this recording, on our April 15th session on accessibility in Microsoft Office 365, we're going to talk about how you can change that reading order. Um, and we're going to talk about the accessibility checker in Microsoft too. So that'll be a great opportunity to see how you can make your Word documents accessible before you export them to PDF. Great, thank you, Lauren. Anything else, Joe? Um, no, this has really been helpful to me and enlightening. And the comment that I wanna make is, I imagine that you folks especially and everybody in general, are really happy that things are progressing all around with the vendors, the textbook editors, all that kind of stuff and providing a lot more capability for the, uh, the, the needs of the students in the, um, that uh, require accessibility. And of course, too, I wanna to mention because I've been uh, more involved in closed captioning as of the last year or two, but it's amazing how I've been talking to many people about CCs and how even those that don't necessarily need them are benefiting from them. That's a little bit of an aside. Well, you're right. Like we all learn differently and on different dates, you know, sometimes <laughs> your eyes are hurting you or, you know, I knew, you know, contacts in and you had to read it. I want to hear it then. I can get that information in a different way as I need it at that time. There are times when you know, folks said there's certain accents that are difficult to process on their personal level. Uh, and their accent may be difficult for somebody else. So that has um, used that they have gone to the CC button. 
All right. And uh, you've always said this since we've had this tool too, Kathy Jo, that you know this this may be a tool that uh, many around the institution want to use, uh, even if they're not necessarily in a disabled category. Correct. Correct. It's a literacy tool. I hear there's study skills on it. Um, they could use it for their children, uh, as long as there's an active Northampton address. Um, so it's just another tool in our arsenal that students and faculty can use. And especially if you're checking course materials, you know, if the PDF readers having difficulty and you're not, you're not switching over to the word accessibility, or if it's still having trouble reading, or if it can't read with the screenshot reader, then perhaps then there, we, they could call your department um, for help in that one specific course material. But most of the folks using the Blackboard static test, it's the screenshot reader. And you also can see why it takes longer to do the test. Not the fact that they may have a, need a longer time to process the information, but if you're drawing a box around each question, waiting for it to convert and listening to it, it does take longer. So again, another reason for the extended time, which adds up. Right. Joe, I'll send you or I'll send Sarah the Padlet link. Thanks. Great. And Just yeah, I use, I use read and write um, on my computer, mostly for that reason. I'm in a little bit of a different role than obviously a faculty would be, but I use it a lot of times just to check on materials and before, you know, before I email Krista and see if this is accessible, let's see what I get when I put it through read and write. Um, but I, I'm really impressed with the tool and I can see so many neat, so many uses for it. Like if I had had a tool like that when I was a student, um, I would have loved it. Uh, that's what I always say. If they just had these tools or I knew about these tools back when I was a student, but you know, it, it's, it's, <clears throat> it's interesting because, um, you know, I have it on my, my laptop at home. And now that I'm doing some work with my fifth grader at home, um, when he has to read stories, it's nice to be able to bring it up um, and use the read and write, you know, the reading function. Um, but just as it is at the college level, even at that level, and I think they use the Wonders program as, I wanna say it's a McGraw-Hill publisher, but so many of their things that are online, they also already have that reading ability. So they can just click and hear the story. So, um, you know, it's it's already starting there. You know, they're, they have it there for them. And I think it really helps my son because he's not much of a reader, but he can listen to a story. <laughs> um, but, you know, they're all, all already putting it in there at that level um, for the early learner. But, right. All right, should we uh, stop the recording then?